Hey gang, what's going on? Juan here and the topic for this video is regarding the NXT Women's Championship currently held by It's Bailey. And uh, a lot of people speculate after the other horsewoman moved up to the main roster, you know, how's the NXT Divas division? And I think it's doing pretty good right now. Uh, the NXT Divas division or women's division, if you will, I'd say is my favorite part of the show, actually. So I want to take some time and talk about hypothetically who could be or who should be the next NXT Women's Champion. I have six Divas that I'll be breaking down one by one and ultimately then at the end revealing who will be my pick to be the next Divas Champion or Women's Champion. So with that being said, let's get to it. I have a nice presentation going on in the background. It took me a, a couple of hours to make. So bam, number one, Asuka, one of the most recent acquisitions in NXT, a great talent. This uh, diva, this female wrestler has been recognized around the whole world. I haven't really had much of a chance to see Asuka outside of her work in NXT. From what I've seen here with her match against Dana Brooke, what she's doing right now, just her smile, her whole character, I love it. Uh, she very much sticks out like I couldn't see her in the main roster right now simply because her style is not a woman's fighting style same thing can be said about Sasha Banks and a ton of other uh, female wrestlers in the WWE but I am a huge fan of Asuka do I think she will be NXT Women's Champion of course I think it's just a matter of not yet because with Bailey, I think you have somebody that is established enough to uh, maintain her status as champion for quite some time so I think they can afford to have Asuka have other side feuds, like what she has going on with Dana Brooke and Evil Emma. So I would rather have that happen a little bit more because it's more fun for me. You can have the NXT Women's Title feud and you can have just NXT Female feuds. And that is what is so great about the show. You don't need to have just one. You can have two or even more. So Asuka... Overall, great talent. I think that they need to develop her a little bit more when it comes to her speaking. They rely on her a lot of, you know, doing the smiles or doing the aww and all those things. That's kind of weird. But uh, I think that's part of the process. You know, I, I don't know how good her English actually is outside of NXT. So that is what the Performance Center is for. That's what NXT is for. So I really have no complaints. Here we go. Next up. Dana Brooke, the best example that the Performance Center works in recent history. When Dana Brooke debuted, everybody crapped on her, myself included. Uh, the moment she started overposing way too much or walked on the ramp, I was watching that episode with my wife, and I'll remember it like it was yesterday, and we just looked at each other like, what is going on here? So she's a former fitness model, but then She's doing all these poses. It reminded me of a Legends of Wrestling video game entrance where every three to four seconds they would do a random pose. That is very much what Dana Brooke was like at the time. But when you look at Dana Brooke now, she has really uh, developed her own character, her own unique style. In the ring, she's also progressed a lot. I think the, the best benefit that she has is that she is athletic by nature. It was just a matter of applying that to the ring. She had a very nice looking finisher from day one, which also helped. She's gone through multiple character changes. I don't think people realize that. At first, she was just the fitness model. Then she was the total diva. Then she was Miss Piggy for a couple of weeks where she was, uh, she had the ponytails going on and way too much makeup. But now she seems to be just, I am better than you. And I think it's nice that they do a less is more type character with Dana Brooke because long term, and I'm saying this on November 21st, is it right now? Yes, November 21st, 2015. I think that Dana Brooke is the future of the WWE uh, Divas Division, Women's Division, whatever you want to say, because Trish Stratus was in that same category. You know, former fitness model. Yeah, she's all looks, but no, no sustainability there. There's no depth to her. But in less than a year, you know, when you talk about the NXT takeovers and everything with Dana Brooke, People have grown to appreciate her style, and I think her match with Asuka, which she lost at the TakeOver event, showed that she can be such a great heel. Her voice, her style, she she actually managed to get the overposing, like the, the flexing and everything, to work in such a way that even though you want to like her in a way, because I do, you can't help but boo her because she is so great at what she does. So do I think she has potential to be NXT Women's Champion? The answer is... Yes.
they keep doing the Pat thing. You know, they they fired that other uh, announcer backstage. Now she's doing it with Tom Phillips. So I'm all getting happy now. Now we now we're good. We're good, people. Next up, we have Alexa Bliss, much like Dana Brooke. Alexa Bliss has developed in the, into a completely different character. Uh, first, she had simply the name of a porn star, and then she was all you know, twinkly, twinkly little star, w- whatever you want to say right now. Uh, she was developing her own character, had a great presence also in the ring. From day one, they referenced the fact that she is small but fierce, and that is definitely carried over. When she turned heel, I remember that a lot of people, once again, myself included, were worried because she was just starting to get over. At the beginning, people saw her as a little goody two-shoes, and they weren't a big fan of that because it was it was too much. But once you found out that she could wrestle, she could perform all these great moves in the ring, people were really getting to like her. Then she turns heel, joins with Blake and Murphy, and then things are kind of rough because People thought to themselves, well, who does this benefit, Alexa Bliss or Blake and Murphy? At first, she was almost just a manager, but now she's the boss. It's almost like when the Dudley boys had Spike as the boss or when Shaniqua was with the Basham brothers. This is very much in that type of category, and I like that. I think that it's it's too easy to fall into the whole Rusev-Lana thing, uh, maybe where Lana's directing but the focus is still on Rusev in the action. I think with Blake and Murphy and Alexa Bliss, even though they can wrestle, it feels like the three of them, their focus is on getting Alexa Bliss to the NXT Women's title rank. And she recently had a match with uh, Bailey, which she lost. But I think that out of all the characters, the one that probably has the most, she's at the most developed rank, if you will, where it doesn't feel like she needs to progress so much. It's a matter of sustaining or just maybe tweaking a little, th- a couple of things, is Alexa Bliss. So I think that out of everybody that I'm discussing in this video, she has a ton of potential to definitely make a big impact, especially when they eventually move her to the main roster, which I do think that they should move her with Blake and Murphy by her side and carry this whole thing on. So don't move her to the main roster as like, here's the valet, here's the tag team specialist. No, have the focus on Alexa Bliss. Have people want to see Blake and Murphy perform in the main roster, but that's a conversation for a different time. I don't think they're ready for that yet, but somebody that has gone to the main roster didn't work too well even though people loved her in NXT, is Emma. When Emma showed up in NXT, it, 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 once again, it shows you that everybody in here, notice I keep having to repeat, you know, they, they started in one thing and ended up in another. With Emma, when she first debuted, she was doing the dance, but she felt like she was just doing moves, and much like Dana Brooke. And she actually managed to turn that into a thing, all the way to like, where she could barely get into the ring, and people would cheer her when she got that done. She became this quirky, lovable character that was a badass wrestler. Her matches with Paige and NXT were absolutely phenomenal, and I really enjoyed them. The moment that she got thrown to the main roster was the moment that you knew her career was about to change, because we know, and historically, this type of character just does not perform well in the main roster, and it's nothing against Emma. Plus, you pair her up with Santino and the Cobra, what do you do? Like, really, there weren't many alternatives, and she turned into a joke. Then, to make matters worse, they brought her down to NXT for a little while. As that Emma, now keep in mind, when Emma left NXT to the main roster and came back, the Divas division, the women's division in NXT became completely different than what it was before. So now she went from being in the spotlight with Paige to being, oh, you're that... You're that girl that failed in the main roster and now you're sort of back. Okay, fine, whatever. Welcome back. And I think that when they turned her heel, a lot of people were just like, well, now you're just being desperate. So it was a very, very difficult time for Emma. And me as a, as a fan of Emma, it was also a difficult time to, to invest time in her because you just didn't know what the hell they were doing with her. But now we get to this point where she's aligned herself with Dana Brooke very much reminiscent of the BFFs where you had Summer Rae, you had Charlotte, you had Sasha Banks. And now Emma has really grown into this mean, fierce, a female character that is just evil. And she's not like evil, like up in your face. Like you just see it in her face, 
like similar looking words there. Anyway, you get the point. Like just the way she looks at you, the way she performs in the ring, you can tell she's trying to prove herself because she knew other things didn't work. Now, that is exactly how this character started. That is exactly how it should have started. So now she's at a point where I think that they could transition this to the main roster, but because this is a conversation about should Emma become NXT Women's Champion, that's a tough one. Because if this was her first go-around in NXT, I would say yeah, but considering she was in the first ever NXT Women's title match, I don't know. I think that she should be involved in a feud for the title, but not win. But then you bring up the question, what happens with Emma? So that's really difficult to answer right now. Uh, incredible potential for Emma. And I think that she is in the category where she shouldn't be in title feuds. They should focus on character-specific alignments like the one she has with Dana Brooke. But Emma, incredible talent, incredible potential. Just a shame that it's been a very rocky path for her. Now, next up, breaking news, people. I don't know if you knew about this or heard about this. If not, I will tell you right now. But Nia Jax is not like most girls. Now, terrible theme song aside, Nia Jax is one of the most recent acquisitions in NXT. She is related to The Rock. So there's been like a thousand jokes of like there's females, there are males, and then there's The Rock's family. They go into wrestling. Nia Jax, I think that she's going under a lot of uh, people's uh, telescopes or whatever you want to say because... Let's be honest here. She looks physically very different than from the traditional diva. And I don't think that's a problem at all. I think divas like Nia Jax, like Awesome Kong, like um, Rosie Lotta Love was in uh, NXT recently. She was terrible in TNA, but now she's just transformed herself physically and mentally. So that is a whole different story. But with Nia Jax, I think it's nice that we get to have such a different physical presence in the women's division in NXT. I enjoy that. I think that it's a little weird how the commentary goes all around the fact that she is a bigger woman because they'll talk about her strength. But it's like if her whole thing is that she is different, just talk about her like stop, you know, stop feeding around the bush and just get right to the point. She is a bigger woman. She's fierce. And that's great. I think that works so well. I just hope that she doesn't end up being in the bodyguard position, which she seems to be going with. Uh, regarding Eva Marie, I could be wrong. Keep in mind, I'm recording this November 21st. I am aware that NXT tapings uh, recently happened before this video, so I haven't read those myself. I don't like to read the spoilers much. Even if I do, sometimes I forget, so that doesn't really matter. But the point is, Nia Jax, do I see her as NXT Women's Champion? I think the inevitable will happen at some point down the line. I don't think it's right now. I think that her theme song, a lot of things, will need to change. And historically, we've seen NXT does do that. It's not like they just keep going with something, you know, whether you like it or not. They do adapt to the situation. So I think that with a different theme song, with a different outfit, which gladly they got rid of that Latin looking thing on her debut match. They're making good progress with her, but they need to they need to almost get rid of the title off of Bailey at some point. Then have the feud be Bailey versus Nia Jax, not for the title, but more of just bully versus fan. Because that's Bailey's character still, even though she's currently the NXT Women's Champion. And I think that meshes in really well and can sort of put Nia Jax at the next level. So Nia Jax, yeah, you're doing pretty good. Uh, I guess we'll have a conversation. If you guys want me to talk about this, let me know in the comment section about Nia Jax's future in the main roster. But considering she is so new here. You know, literally anything is possible. Now, th this is going to be the hardest button press I will have to do. Okay, let me just get comfortable here. I know people will be throwing some trash at me right now. Eva Marie! Anytime we talk about Eva Marie in the podcast or something, it's like a long-running joke because I know that she is the topic of controversy. Understandably so, Eva Marie was originally going to be given a big push in the main roster. And you could see that happen. But they stopped. They sent her down to NXT. She's been training with Brian Kendrick. She has the Total Diva fame. So they're really, on paper, you're like, she is doing everything that needs to be done to succeed or get better or to sort of prove everybody wrong, right? In theory, think about it. But based on everything we've been seeing in NXT... I'm not really sold on Eva Marie. 
Uh, I will say it's very entertaining to see how much the crowd hates Eva Marie. Like when you look at this picture, this was when uh, Eva Marie and Bailey recently had an in-ring promo. And the fact that Eva Marie couldn't get her promo started, very much similar to Vicky Guerrero. And you can see Bailey almost trying to stay in character, but at the same time, she's going like, holy crap, what is going on here? It was pretty funny. So I do think that Eva Marie has a place in NXT. I'll be honest, I really do think she does because she gets such a different exposure. And I don't think her character is meant to win the title. I don't think her character is meant to be this wrestling clinic of a person. I think it's more of just, I am a spoiled brat I'm part of Total Divas, I've done all these things, and now I sort of want to take your title, just because I can. And I think that's, once again, perfectly okay. Now, there's a reason why Eva Marie is last on my list. Because I think that out of everybody here, she has the big potential to become the next NXT Women's Champion. Just going to let that sink in for a little bit. Because think about it. NXT is such a great show that you don't need to be in the title feud to have something that means a lot. We just talked about Dana Brooke a little bit earlier with Asuka, etc. I think that one of the next big feuds will be Asuka versus Eva Marie, which will be a very short match. I think that Eva Marie will be the, def the definition of a transitional champion in NXT. She's going to have that title maybe for a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months at most and then lose to Asuka, and I think that the whole thing will be that she can barely wrestle and will almost hire people APA style to make sure that she remains the NXT Women's Champion. Do I want Eva Marie to become the next NXT Women's Champion? The answer is no. I would put that money on Dana Brooke or Asuka, Alexa Bliss, anybody but Eva Marie. But when you look at that crowd, close your eyes for a second. Don't pause the video, but close your eyes. I'm doing it myself too right now. Bailey, she just got sliced red number two. One, two, three. Hear that. Do you hear that crowd reaction? At some point, somewhere in your body, you want to witness that live in a takeover event. What it would be like for Eve Marie to become NXT Women's Champion in that crowd. I think that... Not since The Undertaker losing the streak, we will have a crowd like the one we would have if Eve Murray became NXT Women's Champion. Who do you think will be the next NXT Women's Champion? Let me know in the comments section below. I know that this is a very controversial topic because it's about Eva Murray. I think if it was about anything else in NXT or even WWE, we would have a different, more understandable conversation. But Eva Murray is just such a topic of controversy. And honestly, I don't know what WWE sees in her uh, long term. I think that she does realistically damage the product. I do think it would get exposure for NXT which I guess any exposure is better than no exposure, but I think that when you've had such a wrestling clinic of a division with the woman, you've had Iron Man matches with the female wrestlers here, where does Eva Marie fit in here? I think it would it would just be great to see if it was like a one-time thing. I could see her like on a weekend, she becomes NXT Women's Champion. Next set of tapings, Bailey or somebody kicks the living crap out of her, or maybe it's some kind of triple threat match. I see her as a one to two week time champion and that is it and if that's the case it's awesome because we've gotten the reaction we wanted to see and it's time for somebody else to become champion and bailey doesn't look weak because notice how i didn't say that eva marie would beat bailey cleanly she would beat her with the slice red but with interference from Nia Jax or something like that, anything is possible in NXT. So if you like this video, definitely give me a like. And if you really like us, make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the podcast available every single Tuesday night. And uh, NXT is easily, I will say it every chance I can, my favorite show right now, my favorite wrestling show, period, in the WWE or the rest of professional wrestling. So until next time, thank you for watching. If you have a suggestion for a future discussion video or square roundtable or just generally anything you'd like us to talk about, drop that in the comment section. So until next time, thank you for watching, and we will be back with tons more right here. I bite that. <laughs>